easy does it the expression easy does it is used to tell someone to do or move something slowly and carefully let's say your friend john brings a box containing fragile items he then asks you to move it to the shelf and says it can break so easy does it here what john wants to say is that you move the box slowly and carefully so that the items inside the box do not break to get one's act together if you get your act together you organize yourself so that you become more efficient in your work that is you give up your poor or bad behavior because you want to change yourself example john wasted his first year playing games but he got his act together his second year to let or get someone of the hook the phrase to let or get someone of the hook means to allow them to escape from a difficult unpleasant or awkward situation example judges will not let the culprits of the hook the last or final straw the phrase the last or final straw means the last problem in a series of problems that makes the whole situation unbearable that is you can withstand the first second and third problems for example but after the last problem you can't continue example that my wife was rude to me was bad enough but her being rude to my parents was the last or final straw the best of both worlds if you have the best of both worlds you enjoy the benefits of two totally different situations at the same time example i have the best of both worlds since i am a school teacher and an online tutor to wrap one's head round something the phrase to wrap one's head round something means to succeed in understanding something challenging difficult or strange example finally i could wrap my head round the complex issue don't count your chickens before they hatch the idiom don't count your chickens before they hatch means that you shouldn't make plans that depend on something good happening before you know that it has actually happened example she wanted to buy a dress in case someone asked her to dance but i told her not to count her chickens before they hatch to go on a wild goose chase if you are on a wild goose chase you do an unsuccessful search for someone or something that doesn't exist example after he wasted one year searching for sheikh zawlawi he realized that he was on a wild goose chase good things come to those who wait the idiom good things come to those who wait means that if you wait patiently you will be rewarded or achieve your desired goals this idiomatic expression is basically used to tell someone to wait patiently example just after one month john complains that his business is not growing i say to him good things come to those who wait to have bigger fish to fry the expression to have bigger fish to fry means to have other important tasks to do or matters to attend to example don't waste my time i have bigger fish to fry here bigger fish to fry means other important works to do to hit the nail on the head let's suppose you are teaching a class of students during the lecture you ask a question one of your students finds the exact answer of the question this is the situation when you can use the expression to hit the nail on the head example john hit the nail on the head john's answer is right it's raining cats and dogs if it rains cats and dogs it rains heavily 
This expression is frequently used by the native speakers of English when there is a heavy rain out there. Example, take your umbrella with you or you will get wet because it's raining cats and dogs. To kill two birds with one stone. The expression to kill two birds with one stone means to achieve two goals in one action and is used when you succeed in completing two tasks in the same action. Example, I killed two birds with one stone since I dropped my son at a school on my way to the office. To look before you leap. The phrase to look before you leap means to think or learn about the possible bad results of an action before doing it. Example, if you are planning to invest in the stock market, I advise you to look before you leap. To rain on someone's parade. The expression to rain on someone's parade means to spoil their plan or pleasure. That is, when someone destroys your plan, you can use this phrase. Example, John, we are sorry to rain on your parade, but we can't allow smoking here. To save for a rainy day. Let's say your friend John earns a lot but doesn't save money for possible future need. This is the situation when you'll say to John, save for a rainy day. Thus, to save for a rainy day means to save money for possible future need. To take it with a grain of salt. If you take something with a grain of salt, you do not believe in everything you are told because you think it's unlikely to be true. Example, I take everything John says with a grain of salt because I think it's not true. The elephant in the room. When you say that there is an elephant in the room, you mean that there is a major problem out there that's known to everyone but no one talks about it. Example, the university, when deciding the exam pattern, steadfastly ignored the elephant in the room, the time management issue. To throw caution to the wind. If you throw caution to the wind, you actually act recklessly or do something without worrying about the risks. Example, John threw caution to the wind and started cheating in the exam. To put something on ice. If something is put on ice, it literally means that it will preserve its freshness. However, figuratively, this expression means to postpone something, some plan or action or project. Example, John has put the project on ice until he succeeds in collecting the funds. You can say that again. When you hear Americans saying, you can say that again, after someone makes a statement, they mean that they strongly agree with them. Example, person A, it's really hot today. And person B, yes, you can say that again. Thus, the expression, you can say that again, means that's true. I strongly agree with you. Speak of the devil. Let's suppose... You two friends were talking about John. What happens suddenly is that during the conversation John appears unexpectedly. It's the situation when you'll use the phrase speak of the devil. Example, did you hear about John? Speak of the devil, he is here. Thus the phrase speak of the devil is used when a person who is being talked of appears suddenly during the conversation. So far, so good. You have started a project recently. The project is going well without any problems up to the present time. Now, someone asks you of how the project is going. Here, you'll use the phrase, so far, so good. Example, John, how's your project going? So far, so good, Jack. Thus, the phrase, so far, so good means that some work or task that you have 
recently started is going on well without any problems. Pull yourself together. Let's say, John, your younger brother, takes your phone and drops it into water. As a result, you become agitated and angry. Your friend then says to you, pull yourself together, Jack. John is your own brother. What your friend wants to say is that you take control of your feelings, anger. Thus, pull yourself together means calm down. On the ball, when players are keeping the eyes on the ball, they are alert and focused. Similarly, when you say to someone, be on the ball, you mean that they should be alert, focused and aware of what's happening around them so that they can quickly react to that situation. Example, your enemy can attack you anytime, be on the ball. Thus, the phrase, be on the ball, means be alert and focused. Go back to the drawing board. Your friend John follows a particular strategy for achieving some goal. What happens is that his effort and plan both fail. He then says, I must go back to the drawing board. What he means is that he must start all over again and make a new start because the previous plan failed. Get out of hand. Let's suppose your son no longer listens to you and no longer does as you say. Here, your son has gotten out of hand, which means that you no longer have control over your son. That is, he doesn't listen to you. Similarly, a situation can get out of hand. Thus, the phrase to get out of hand means to get out of control. Bite the bullet. Your teacher gives you a lengthy assignment to complete within a week. On your side, you don't like to do assignments. Now you can say, I hate doing assignments, but still I'll have to bite the bullet. Here, what you want to say is that you have to do this unpleasant and difficult task, although you want to avoid doing it. Thus the phrase, to bite the bullet, is used when you have to do some unpleasant task, although you want to avoid it. Better late than never. Let's assume you gave $1,000 to your friend. For some reason, your friend returns it to you very late. This is when you'll use the phrase better late than never. Example, John finally returns the money he took from me after one year. Well, better late than never. Thus the phrase better late than never means it's better to do something late than not doing it at all. A dime a dozen. You are a shopkeeper, you sell books on different subjects. What happens is that a customer comes and asks about the price of one of the books available on your shop. After you tell him the price, he says, sorry, it's very expensive. Books like this are a dime a dozen. What he means here is that books like this are common and of little value. So the phrase a dime a dozen means something easily obtained and of little value. A blessing in disguise. Your friend John had a high paying job. For some reason he then lost that job. Afterwards he succeeds in finding another job that pays higher than the previous one. Now he says Losing the first job was really a blessing in disguise. Here, what he means is that losing the first job seemed bad to him at first, but later it resulted in a higher paying job. So it's a blessing in disguise. A perfect storm. John doesn't complete his assignment and stays away from his school, which results in the cancellation of his admission. Here, what happens is that not completing the assignment creates a perfect storm for John. Thus, the phrase, a perfect storm, is an extremely bad situation in which many bad things happen at the same moment, creating the worst situation at last. 
A picture is worth a thousand words. When you hear Americans saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, they mean that it's better to show practically than tell theoretically. Or an image can describe what a description in a thousand words can. Or it's used to say that it's often easier to show something in a picture than to describe it with words. Add insult to injury. The government introduces new education policy, which lays down that only two hours will be given to your students to write and submit the answer sheet. Moreover, the policy states that the exam pattern will be of the same length. The students then criticize the policy and say the government reduced the answer writing time from three to two hours and to add insult to injury, it is stated that the paper would be of the same length. Thus the phrase, to add insult to injury, means to make a bad situation even worse. Birds of a feather flock together. The proverb, birds of a feather flock together, means people of same sorts and interests are found together. Here, birds metaphorically refers to people and feather refers to interests. Comparing apples with oranges. John compares the job of a servant with that of a teacher. In this situation, you can say, John, you are comparing apples with oranges. Thus, comparing apples and or with or to oranges means to compare two items that are very different in nature. Do something at the drop of a hat. Let's say you are not habituated of speaking in public, while your friend Jack grabs the opportunity of speaking in public immediately. Your friend John then says to you, you hate to speak in public, but your friend Jack is always ready to get on stage at the drop of a hat. Thus, if you do something at the drop of a hat, you do it immediately without stopping to think about it. Put all one's eggs in one basket. John applies for several jobs. You then ask him why he does so. As a response to your question, he says, because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Thus the phrase, put all eggs in one basket, means to depend for one's success on a single person or plan of action. Every cloud has a silver lining. The proverb, every cloud has a silver lining, means that there is always a positive side of a difficult or unpleasant situation, even though it's not apparent. Give them a taste of their own medicine. If you give someone a taste of their own medicine, you do the same bad thing to them that they have done to you. Example, it's not bad that you give John a taste of his own medicine. I hear you. You are a spoken English teacher. You teach English on some online platform. One of your students asks you to teach him personally, stressing that he has to clear the IELTS exam with an overall 8 band. On your side, the condition is that you can't teach anyone personally. Now you can say to that student, well, I hear you, but I cannot teach you personally. The phrase, I hear you, means I understand you, I understand what you're saying, and I'm sympathetic towards you. No problem. This American English phrase is used as a response to thanks. That is, you'll use the phrase, no problem, when someone says thanks. This phrase is more conversational and informal and is used as an alternative to you are welcome. I don't buy it. The verb to buy means to purchase something. However, the literal meaning is not intended when the phrase is used. Your friend John says rot learning is the actual learning. On your side, you don't agree with John. As such, you can say to John, 
You may think so, but I don't buy it. Thus, the phrase "I don't buy it" means I disagree with you. It's lit, fun, and exciting. Your university organized a singing competition in which many students participated. You and your friends attended the event. Now your friends say that singing competition was really lit. What your friends want to say is that the competition was really amazing, awesome, cool, fun, or exciting. So the phrase "it's lit" is similar to "it's cool, awesome, or amazing." To give props to someone, let's say you, along with your friends, are having a picnic in some park. The interesting fact here is that your friend John cooked the delicious meal for you all. You all then praise John and say, "John, you're really a good cook." Here on this side, John says, "I give props to Sophia, who has helped me with preparing the meal." What John is saying is that he gives credit to Sophia. Thus, the phrase to give. Props to someone means to give them due respect, credit, or recognition. Getting bent out of shape. In the group discussion, what happens is that you express your own opinion in a particular subject matter. Your opinion is not given weightage. As a result, you become agitated or upset. Your friends then ask you, "Why are you getting bent out of shape?" What your friends are asking is why you are agitated or upset. Thus, the phrase "getting bent out of shape" means to become angry or upset. To ditch something, let's suppose your friend John has been using the same cell phone for years. What happens suddenly is that. You see John carry a new phone with him. You then ask him about the old phone, and as a response he says, "I ditched the old phone." What John means is that he has got rid of the old phone because he no more wants it. Thus, the phrase to ditch something means to get rid of something unwanted. See you later. Goodbye. After a casual meeting. At the time of departure, your friend John says, "Okay, guys, see you later." Here, what John wants to say is that he says goodbye to you all. Thus, the phrase "see you later" is an informal way of saying goodbye. A piece of cake. Let's say you have sent an invitation to your friends to attend your tea party. You are a little bit anxious about the making of tea because you don't know how to make it. You then describe this issue to your best friend Sophia. Sophia then says, "Making tea is a piece of cake for me." Here, what Sophia means is that making tea is easy for her. So the phrase, "a piece of cake," means that something is easily achieved or done. It's not rocket science. You're playing badminton with your friend. While you're playing, your friend John comes and sees you playing. Shocked by your amazing skill, John says, "Wow, you're playing it really well." And as a response to John's statement, you say, "Badminton is not rocket science. It's all about hitting the shuttlecock with your racket across the net." Thus. The expression "it's not rocket science" means something that's very, very easy to do. Shoot the breeze. Let's suppose your exams are over now. You have three days of holiday. You propose a plan to your friends, saying, "Let's gather tonight for spending some time together." In the meeting, what are you doing? You're just shooting the breeze. Thus. The phrase "shooting the breeze" means to indulge in idle talk or wrap up in things that are not important. Break a leg. Your best friend Sophia participates 
in the singing competition. Now it's time for her to sing. When she is about to go on stage, you can say, break a leg. What you want to say is that you are saying good luck to her. Thus, the phrase, break a leg, means good luck, often said to actors or singers. It's for the birds. Your university organizes an event with the name Literary Fest and invites the students to it. The students find the fest very boring and say the event is for the birds. What the students mean is that they are saying that the literary festival is worthless, not important. Thus, the phrase or expression, it's for the birds, means something that's not important. He is behind the eight ball. Your friend John is experiencing a very, very difficult situation as his business is going down. So, John is behind the eight ball as he is experiencing loss in the business. So, the phrase behind the eight ball means to experience a difficult situation or phase of life. Don't cry over a spilt milk. Your younger brother takes your phone and mistakenly drops it into water. Now your pa parents are scolding your brother. In this situation, you say, don't cry over spilt milk. Thus, the expression, don't cry over spilt milk, means that there is no use in getting worried about some bad past event which cannot be changed. Put up your dukes. Your enemy challenges you to fight with him saying, put up your dukes. What your enemy means is that he asks you to raise your fists in preparation for a fight. Thus, the expression, put up your dukes, means get ready to fight. Table an item. When you hear Americans say, let's table it, they mean that they want to postpone discussion on something. Thus, the phrase, table an item, means to put something aside for consideration at another time. Go Dutch. You all friends decide to dine outside today. As everyone is a student, all of you agree to share the cost of the meal for his or her own food. What are you all doing here? You are just going Dutch or have decided to go Dutch on dinner. Thus the phrase go Dutch means that each person shares the cost of something equally. Plead or take the fifth. When you hear Americans saying, I take the fifth on that, they mean that they are not going to answer the question. Thus, the phrase take or plead the fifth in general means you are not going to answer the question. For example, your friend asks you, do you like movies? As a response to this question, you say, sorry, I take the fifth on that. Here, you mean you don't want to answer the question. It's all Greek to me. You are a student of class 12. You've been given the function of criticism, a text on literary criticism by Matthew Arnold to read. You find it very difficult to understand. You then say, it's all Greek to me. What are you saying here? You are simply saying that the text is a complex one and difficult to understand. Thus, the phrase or expression, it's all Greek to me, means something that's very, very difficult to comprehend. Cost an arm and a leg. You are at the market for shopping. You want to purchase a hand watch. You are asked about the price. The shopkeeper says, it will cost you $1,000. Now, what will be your reaction to this situation? What phrases will you use in this situation? The native speakers use it costs an arm and a leg. Thus, if something costs an arm and a leg, it is very, very, very expensive. Make yourself at home. Some guest has arrived at your house. Now, you want to comfort your guest. What phrases will you use in this situation? Or, how will you comfort your guest? 
The native speakers of English say in such kind of situation, make yourself at home. Thus, make yourself at home is a phrase used to make a f guest feel comfortable and behave in an informal and relaxed way. Not my thing. Your friend puts forward a plan and says, let's watch Titanic this weekend. Now, you are not interested in the plan. What phrases will you use in this situation? The native speakers of English say, in such kind of situation, it's not my thing. Thus, it's not my thing is a phrase that is used to imply that you are not interested in it and you reject and dismiss the plan. Bring up to speed. Let's say you two friends were continuously discussing a lengthy topic. What happens suddenly is that another friend of yours joins the group discussion. Now, as your friend who recently joined has no clue about the topic, you need to elucidate or explain the major points of the topic to your friend. This is the situation when you will use the phrase, let me bring you up to speed. Thus, bring someone up to speed means that you provide them with all the relevant and recent details of something. What are you up to? This is one of the most commonly used expressions in English. This is a general question and alternative way of saying or asking what are you doing. Let's assume that after a short period of three days, you again meet your friend. Your friend asks you what are you up to at the moment. What your friend wants to know is that you tell him what you are doing nowadays. Thus, the phrase what are you up to means what are you doing. You crack me up. You have a long friend circle consisting of different personalities. Of them, John is funny, hilarious and comical by nature. What happens is that you, all friends including John, catch up and John starts quaking jokes. Everyone then says, John's jokes really quake us all up. Here, to quake someone up means to make them laugh. So, you quake me up is the alternative way of saying you make me laugh. Let's hang out. The typical way to use this phrase is when you, for instance, start liking someone and you want to spend some time with them. In this situation, you ask for spending some time with them, saying, let's hang out. Thus, to hang out means to spend time with some favorite person at some favorite place. Oh yes, I got a kick out of it. Let's suppose you saw an interesting movie last night, which you really enjoyed watching. Now, your friend asks you if you enjoyed that movie. What will be the response to this question from your side? In this situation, you can say, I really got a kick out of it. So, to get a kick out of something means that you find it very, very amusing and enjoyable. Let's call it a day. After working all day, you are now completely exhausted and don't want to work anymore because you think you have done enough. In this situation, you can use the phrase, let's call it a day. So, this phrase means to stop working because you are very tired and have run out of strength, vitality and energy. It's a long shot. The phrase, it's a long shot, means that there is a small chance of succeeding, but still there is hope to succeed. As such, you want to give it a try. Let's say, you want an overall 9 band in IELTS exam and the condition is that you are not really that good at English. In this situation, you can use the phrase a long shot. For example, getting an overall 9 band in IELTS is a long shot, but I'll try my best. I'm broke, not having money. Your friends propose a plan and say, let's go to the movies this weekend. Here, on your side, the condition is that you are running out of money. In this situation, you can use the phrase, 
I'm broke, which means that you have no money. Pull someone's leg. John, one of your friends, tells you that he has bought a Ferrari car, and the truth is that he hasn't. Now you can say to John, John, have you really bought a Ferrari car, or are you pulling my leg? So pulling someone's leg means to tell them something that's not true, as a way of joking with them. I can't even. You're so shocked. Angry, happy, or disappointed about a situation or event that you have become speechless and don't find words to describe it. This is when you'll use the phrase "I can't even." For example, how could you do that to me? I can't even. Give the cold shoulder. After three years of breakup, you suddenly happen to meet your ex-girlfriend. As your relationship ended with a bad ending. Your ex-girlfriend ignores you intentionally. Here, what she is doing is giving you the cold shoulder. So, to give someone the cold shoulder means to show an unfriendly attitude towards them by ignoring them. Feel under the weather. You've got a slight fever. You're not feeling well. While you're experiencing fever. Your friends ask you to play with them. This is when you'll use the phrase "feeling under the weather." You'll say, "I'm feeling under the weather." So, feeling under the weather means to feel sick or unwell. No big deal. Your friend's laptop has stopped working. He brings it to you, and you succeed in fixing it. Your friend says, "Wow, that's amazing." Here, in such situation, you'll say it's no big deal because your laptop needed only a restart. So the phrase "it's no big deal" means that something is of little importance. Catch someone's drift. Your home tutor explains the Newton's law of gravitation to you, and after finishing his lecture, he says, "Do you catch my drift?" What your tutor wants to ask is. Do you understand what I teach? So, to catch someone's drift means to understand them. I get it. The phrase "I get it" is similar to "I understand it." After or during lecture, your teacher asks your class, saying, "Do you get it?" As a response to this question, you say, "Yes, I get it." Thus, the phrase "I get it" means I understand it. Has the cat got your tongue? Let's suppose your friend John is talkative, but what happens is that your old friends are in a casual meeting and John unexpectedly goes on keeping silence. This is when you'll use the phrase "Has the cat got your tongue?" Thus, the phrase means "Why are you not speaking or talking?" How's it going? Or what's up? The phrases "How's it going?" or "What's up?" are the most common expressions in English. You will be using these phrases when meeting someone. Thus, the phrases mean "What are you doing?" or "What's happening?" You are minging. Let's say it's winter and your friend hasn't taken a shower since the last week. As a result. His body is smelling very unpleasantly. In this situation, native speakers of British English say, "You are minging. Go and take a shower." Thus, minging means bad smelling. It's dent. You've seen a video that has caught your attention and impressed you greatly. In this situation, you're going to say, "Wow, it's awesome." But native speakers of British English will say it's dense. Thus, it's dense means it's awesome, cool, or beautiful. Bodge something. Your boss has given you a presentation to prepare. As a fresher, you couldn't do it very well. In this situation, native speakers use the phrase "Oh, you have bossed." The pre presentation, which means 
you haven't been able to produce the presentation as expected. Thus, to botch something means to repair something very badly or to make a mess of something. Bob's your uncle. Let's say you're guiding someone to the process of making tea and you want to express the fact that the process of making tea is very very easy and it's a piece of cake. In this situation, native speakers of British English use Bob's your uncle to express the effortlessness of something. Example, to make tea, just add milk and sugar to hot water and Bob's your uncle, it's ready. Just popping out, let's say you are with your friends in a meeting and you want to go to take tea or coffee outside. What phrases will you use in this situation? In this situation, native speakers of British English will say just popping out to take tea. Thus, popping out means to go out to do something and return quickly. Let's catch up. This is also a commonly used expression by native speakers of English. This expression is the alternative expression for let's meet. So use this phrase when you want to say let's meet. Example, John, I haven't covered the entire syllabus. Let's catch up today for a group discussion over the prescribed topics. Sit on the fence. This phrase means to remain neutral or to refuse to take sides in a dispute. It's used in a derogatory way about someone who lacks courage to decide. Example, don't sit on the fence, either support or oppose. Thus, sitting on the fence means not taking sides due to lack of courage. When pigs fly, the phrase when pigs fly is used as part of a sentence to mean that something is very unlikely to ever happen. Example, you say you'll wake up at 6 in the morning. It will only happen when pigs fly. Thus, when pigs fly means that something is most probably not going to take place. Shoot from the hip. This is a very, very informal expression often used by native speakers of English. Shoot from the hip means to react to some situation without thinking carefully about it. Example, John often shoots from the hip without knowing all the facts. Thus, shoot from the hip means to act or react recklessly. Once in a blue moon, the phrase once in a blue moon means not very often or very rarely and used as part of a sentence. This is one of the most frequently used expressions in English. Example, nowadays she is busy with her preparation. I only see her once in a blue moon. Thus, once in a blue moon means that something takes place very rarely. Make a long story short. The phrase make a long story short means to describe what happened briefly in a few words, leaving each and every minor detail. If you say to make a long story short, you mean that you are only going to describe the main points. Example, to make the long story short, I sold my old lapel. Thus, to make a long story short suggests that you don't want to go into details while describing something. Leave no stone unturned. The expression leave no stone unturned means to try each and every possible way to achieve some goal. If you leave no stone unturned, you make an onerous effort to achieve some goal trying out every possible way. Example, I left no stone unturned to clear the entrance test. Thus, to leave no stone unturned suggests that you try very, very hard to achieve your goal. Hit the books. The phrase hit the books 
is one of the most common expressions among students. This phrase means to study very, very, very hard. If you hit the books, you begin to study in a serious and determined way. Example, I have four exams this week. I have to hit the books. So, hit the books means to study hard. Don't judge a book by its cover. The idiom, don't judge a book by its cover, means that you should not judge someone or something solely based on their appearance without knowing the full situation. Example, John is the most knowledgeable person. Don't judge a book by its cover, saying he does not know anything. Let the cat out of the bag. The phrase, let the cat out of the bag means to reveal a secret recklessly or by mistake. If you let the cat out of the bag, you tell of the secret mistakenly. Example, finally, I had no other option than letting the cat out of the bag. Pass an exam with flying colors. The phrase pass an exam or test with flying colors means to pass or clear the exam or test very easily and successfully. If you could pass an exam with flying colors, it means the exam was very easy for you and you scored well in the exam. Example, John is very good at English. He passed the communicative English paper with flying colors. Get the head around something challenging. The phrase get the head around something means to succeed in understanding something. If you get your head around something, you start understanding it. Example, it was initially difficult, but I got my head around the chapter of phrasal verb when I read it thrice. To stick to guns. The phrase Stick to guns means to refuse to change one's mind. If you stick to your guns, you don't change your own opinion about something despite criticism. Example, although John was very badly criticized, he stuck to his guns. Force one's mind. If some idea or thought forces your mind, you start thinking about it for a short time period of time. That is, the thought or idea occurs to your mind. Example, it crossed my mind that I would need to release the payment for continuation. Speak one's mind. If you speak your mind, you say exactly what you think and you don't worry if your word will upset anyone. That is, you have the courage to say what you think and what you want to say, and you disregard what other people will think about it. Example, John is never afraid to speak his mind.